An array is simply a list. So an array formula is a formula that uses lists. If we take our array working file, we have a very simple example in here of a small shopping list, quantity, price for each item, and then a line total that is then adding up to give a grand total. So we're looking to spend $39.05. If you wanted to work out the grand total without the need for this line total column, then we could do that with an array formula. And we simply create a formula as normal, that instead of being the sum of each of those cells multiplied, we tell it to take the two lists, so the list of the quantity and the list of the price, and multiply them together. So we could say equals that list multiplied by that list. And just to make things a little easier to read, we'll bracket each of our lists up. And when we press return, we see the result is 616. The reason it is 616 and not 3905 is because in the lists, it simply looks at the first two index values and multiplies them to get the result 616. In order to get Excel to treat these lists as an array and thus move down the two lists together, so to do that multiplication, then move down to the next two items and multiply, then to the next two items and multiply, then to the next two items and multiply, and then down to the last two items and multiply. In order to do this, we need to tell Excel that this formula is an array formula. In order to do that, instead of just pressing return, we need to hold down control and shift and then press return. And then you'll see that the result is actually still 616. Because in that formula, although it's been treated as an array formula, and we know that because if we repeat the same action, you can see up in the formula bar the sets of parentheses before and after the formula. You can see them there, an opening and a closing parenthesis around your formula, including around the equal sign. But it also needs, because we're now dealing with a list and it's going down the list, multiplying that by that, that by that, we need to actually add up all of those component parts. So we're going to add in a sum function around the two arrays. Don't then forget your Control Shift Enter. And you'll see that in that case, the result is now 3905. So in one cell, we've been able to carry out, in this case, five cross multiplications and one sum. Seeing that in live action, we can use our stock data file and produce a stock value list by multiplying all the items by the item price for each line. So let's create a new sheet and call that stock value. Now to make life a little easier on the formula, I'm actually going to go name the two ranges. So column C, let's call that cost. And column G, which is the quantity, we'll call that QTY. That way, in my grand total formula, I don't have to then worry about the referencing of the correct cells because I can use the named ranges. So we're going to say equals sum, open brackets, the first named range, which is the cost, multiplied by the second name range, which is QTY, close bracket. I need to tell Excel to treat this as an array formula, i.e. within that sum, there are two lists, the cost list and the quantity list. And at each point in that list, it will multiply the cost in that line by the quantity in that current line. So it's control, shift and enter, and I get hash value. So obviously we have a problem. Now that problem is not in our array formula, that is correct. It's actually in the named range. Now although in Excel we can now use full column references for a named range, the array cannot. So we need to go into our name manager and adjust the cost range so that it actually uses cell references. So we'll go from C2 through C999, which is much longer than we need to be, but then we're covering ourselves. So that's a tick. The quantity also needs change into a specific range. So that will be G2 to G999. Tick. And then close our name manager. And as if by magic, our array then works itself out to be a total value of $2,029. Now the cell can be treated much as if it's a normal cell and we could format that, but let's format to currency. But what we can't do is enter the cell and leave it 
because we will return to an issue. The issue is that we haven't now made it an array formula. So every time you leave an array formula, you must do control shift enter so that Excel knows that that's an array formula. So it doesn't matter if you just click in and click out, it will then return back to being a normal formula. It's always control shift enter when leaving that cell. You can always check the formula bar to see that the parentheses brackets are visible. So that's what an array is and how to create one.